Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Um, today's video is going to be talking about electrolysis and electrolysis is hair removal basically. Um, something that a lot of trans women have to um, have to go through. Um, some are very lucky and don't require any but the vast majority do need some kind of hair removal. Okay so today like I say it's all going to be about electrolysis so I'll do my best to try and pass as much of the knowledge on as what I've learned about the, the subject when I was having it done as I can, all right? Now, first thing I want to address is a, a question that gets asked quite often um, on social media, and, and I've had it put my way quite a few times now. Um, and that is, do hormones stop you from getting any facial hair or body hair or anything like that coming through? And unfortunately, for, for me anyway, um, the answer is no, no they don't. And they will slow down hair regrowth um, but what you've got to think of it is like the hair itself once it's developed so once it's actually a fully fledged hair and it's it's graduated from hair school it's it's there um, and it's it's not going to go anywhere unless it's tret so it's either tret through electrolysis or through laser hair removal okay and they both work in similar ways but there are differences I'm not going to do another video on laser hair removal another time um, but yeah, so hormones aren't magic. I wish they were. I really do wish that they would stop all hair from growing, um, apart from the ones on my head. And, um, you know, it would be great if they did, but they don't. So that hopefully answers that question straight away. Okay, now, price-wise, keep in mind, um, I live in the Midlands of the UK, and the prices here are a heck of a lot different to what you'd find in London. Okay, so always keep in mind where you live, Will have a bearing on how much you pay um now for me it was it roughly worked out to almost nearly like a pound a minute so like <clears throat> pardon me um a 15 minute session was about 15 quid um if i wanted to go for the full hour then it got a little bit cheaper so like the more time that you had then the the cheaper it got and i think the full hour was costing me about 35-ish, 40-ish, um, so it, it was worth having the full hour, but the problem was, was that the area I was having done first was my top lip, and having a full hour in on the bed, as it were, when you were having it done um, on a, such a small area, not really advised, not long term, not every week, because you're putting a heck of a lot of heat into such a small area. Um, so yeah, price-wise it was really reasonable for me. I was fortunate. Um, I was able to afford um, getting it done, you know, prior to presenting female um, and that carried on right the way through my transition and yeah, I was able to afford to get it done. I had to stop a couple of times for financial reasons, but it, it, it were few and far between when I had to do that. It was relatively affordable for me. so. If you can afford to pay a little and often, then it's it's a very viable way of doing it, to be totally honest. Um, now, how long were the sessions? Now, like I just said, the sessions, it, it'll depend on the practitioner. For me, I would say anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes, or possibly 10 minutes to 20 minutes at a time for things like the top lip. The larger the area, the longer you can spend getting it done. Now, you can soldier through and have a full hour on your top lip. There's really nothing to say that you can't. Um, but all I'm saying is that just, just be a little bit weary because you're putting a heck of a lot of heat into a small area. And, yeah, the temptation's there to rush and get it all taken off as quickly as possible. But you've got to think of the end result, okay? This is the long game. You're going to have this skin for a really long time. So rushing it and... You know doing things that are not exactly recommended you don't want to be left with with any kind of problems okay so just treat it well it's your skin okay it's the skin we're in um now you'll you'll find the process how it works is just just while we're talking about how long it takes it comes down largely to how quickly you can get an area cleared okay so if you just stick using my top lip as the you know the the moustache area um if you keep using that as the example um what they mean is, is that a clearance is when they've cleared the whole area right now why that's such a big deal aside from the fact that there's no hair there at that point is that 
you can then start to identify which hairs are on a different hair cycle. Now, hair cycles, nothing to be scared of. It's nothing too fancy. It's just the stage that the hair is at in its development, okay? So you'll find that each hair follicle has maybe one, two, three hairs in there, possibly more. And each of the hairs can be on top of each other. So you could have like one hair there as my pen, another hair, and then another hair. And they'll be at different stages of developing. And there's no way for your practitioner to know when, when they're zapping one of the hairs, what stage that hair is going to be at. Um, which is why you sometimes have to have the same area zapped and why sometimes you'll think, but I had all the hair done there. Why have I got so much regrowth? Well, it's it's nothing personal against you or anything like that. It's it's just because the hair, the, the follicle itself has got different hairs in there that are at different stages of development. And until you can zap and cauterize each one, then you are going to have to keep having it done, okay? Some people are really lucky. That's why you'll hear stories on the internet of people who have had like 10 sessions and all of a sudden they're completely clear and they don't have to go again. We hate those people. No, we don't. We love them, really. Um, and other people will have to go for a year. I had to go, honestly, for this little area, just from there, okay, maybe from about there, like that bit, yeah, so all underneath the nose, top of the lip, down to there and around. That was about a year for me, and, and I was going solid every week. Now, don't get me wrong, it wasn't like the whole time I had to worry about there being hair there. At first, it was like almost like a 3D printer, so the takeoff line after line after line after line until eventually I left with like a pencil moustache, which you can see in some of my older photographs, and that was doable for me to an extent it did make me somewhat dysphoric but it was doable for me because it was before I was presenting female anyway so in my mind it, it wasn't too worrying at that point I could live with it I think is is the terminology I would use I would I was able to live with it I didn't like it I didn't want it there and it made me feel uncomfortable but I could persevere with it um but when I started presenting femme, then yeah, there was no way I would have been able to go through that. Now, some people can, some people will have all the confidence in the world and think, screw it, I'm owning this. And that's great, but pff, I, I couldn't have done that, not a chance. Um, I'm nowhere near confident enough to have pulled that off. Um, so yes, you, you will have it done in stages. And once that clearance done, they'll be able to start picking off the hairs that are on different cycles. And then before you know it, you'll get less and less and less regrowth. And that's when you really do just start having maintenance. And the maintenance doesn't have to be every week. It could just be once every two weeks to begin with, and then once every three weeks, and then once every four weeks. And before you know it, you're not needing to go anymore, you know? Um, so yes, that's, that's why they can't actually say to you how long it's going to take. I know the very first question I asked when I got into her room was, how long is it going to take before I'm hair free? And... Luckily for me, I had a really good one and she didn't feed me a load of lies or anything like that. And she just said, I honestly don't know. She said, on average, it can be anywhere from six months to a year for, for, for an area like your top lip. It depends how quickly we can get it cleared. And that's the same for every other part of the body. It all depends on how big the area is, how much you can afford, what your pain tolerance is like, what the hair cycle's doing underneath, which you aren't possibly going to know. Um and then you'll have some idea okay but you're never gonna know 100 percent, okay factual all right you're never gonna know um so don't beat yourself up it takes as long as it takes okay but you're focusing on the end result all right um so how it works um a lot of people get freaked out at the thought of having a needle put anywhere near their face and luckily it's not a needle it's it's a probe um and it's not a needle like, you know, I know a lot of people are having vaccinations right now where you feel the sharp scratch. You just don't. Um, you don't even feel it going in. This needle probe, or probe as I'm going to start calling it from now, um, is so, so, so thin. Um, I mean, if you think about how small a hair follicle is, this thing is thin enough to go into a hair follicle. The only discomfort that you feel is when they tap on the pedal, if they've got a pedal machine, and 
that sends a small current through to destroy the hair. Okay, so that's how electrolysis works. You're destroying the hair through heat. And when the current gets passed, then yes, that will cause a little bit of discomfort and um, it's not very pleasant, okay? And it is painful. And um, yeah, you know, when, when, you, when you're sat there, the, the discomfort isn't very nice, okay? It's not, you're not gonna look forward to getting electrolysis done. Look forward to the end result. You'll keep hearing me say that because it's ever so important. It's about the end result, okay? So yeah, it does hurt, okay? Different people have got different tolerances to it. Just because someone found it excruciatingly painful doesn't mean you're going to, okay? Doesn't mean you're going to. Just because they found it incredibly easy doesn't mean you're going to. You might really hate it, it might really hurt, but again, put your mind into the end result for where you wanna be with how much facial hair you have or don't have, okay? Um, pain is a general rule, just while we're talking about top lips anyway. Anything, I use my pen as a pointer. So anything from this middle bit here, which I hope I'm doing properly, so just under your nose, will really hurt, all right? The closer you get to the nose and the closer you get to the lip, especially in the center, is gonna hurt, okay? Um, anything further away, so this area and that area, ain't gonna hurt as much, all right? It's uncomfortable and it's a bit pinching, but it's not unpleasant. I could sit there all day, all right? Doesn't mean you're going to be able to, but I could sit there all day and have that area done. It wouldn't bother me in the slightest, okay? Um, but I had a really good pain threshold for it, so I was lucky, but even I shed tears when it was done under my nose, and they can call it discomfort all they like, but damn it, that was pain, um, and it really hurt, okay? Um, so yeah, that's that's the general rule of thumb when it comes to pain and, and discomfort, and there's different creams and different ointments and stuff that you can put on, and aloe vera is going to be a big friend of yours as well, okay? Um, so all those different things will help. Um, Think, things to remember as well about getting the, the electrolysis done. Your face can get quite swollen a little bit afterwards. It can get a bit red, you can get bumpy, you can get little scabs as well, because don't forget you're putting like heat into an area. So when it destroys the hair, it can, it can cause like a scab. And you might wanna just consider, um, we'll forget that we're in an age where we're all wearing masks when we go outside, hopefully, you know, wear a mask. Um, but when I had it done, I wasn't I wasn't wearing a mask, and um, this was pre-COVID days. So what I used to have to do was walk from the office back to the car. Now I'm naturally a self-conscious person. Okay, I naturally am. Um, I know I do these videos, and you try and put your best foot forward and say, you know, you can do this and you can get over this problem, but. Truth be told, I still get really self-conscious when I'm outside. Even though I've never had a bad experience, I've had no one be nasty to me or anything like that, I still get self-conscious. I still think, oh gosh, that person's staring at me. That person's laughing at me. And I do my level best to not let, let it affect me. And I try and function and get on with my day. But the worry and the, the triggers are still there for me. After all this time, they're still there. and. I think they'll always be there, but it's about how well I function while having them. And anyway, back on track, when you're considering who you want to get the electrolysis done with, which is really important, um, because you are gonna spend a lot of time with this person, bearing in mind as well, um, just keep in mind how far away you're parking, because if you're like me, you might wanna just have that security blanket of knowing that it's only a short walk back to your car, so how many people can you possibly bump into? Um, or even better, if you can park on site somewhere, then brilliant, you know, that would be awesome. But just keep that in mind. I will temper that by saying, even though I was self-conscious and my, my face looked like a Picasso sometimes when I was walking back, I only occasionally had people looking at me. You know what it's like when you're in town on a Saturday or a Sunday or, or whatever, whatever day of the week, you know, pre-COVID, People were so busy rushing to get to this shop and that shop and they didn't look at you. They weren't interested in what you were doing, you know. They're, they're too self-absorbed and wrapped up in their own rubbish to give a monkeys about what you're doing. Um, and just keep that in mind, all right? You know, the, the world is 
very, very focused on what they're doing half the time. So try not to let it worry you too much, okay? But it's just something to keep in mind when you're getting this done, okay? Um, so yeah, things to remember. Price, fair location, how long, nobody knows. No one's gonna know, okay? Um, how it works, probe goes down into the hair follicle, zaps the hair at the base, cauterizes the hole, stops the hair from growing from there. But like I said, hairs will be at different points in the cycle, so you might get another one grow through, in which case you have to have that hair zapped again until there's no hairs left in the follicle and then that area will be clear, okay? It can take as long as it takes. Just think of the end result, okay? Um, pain, discomfort, yep, it does hurt. Yep, it is uncomfortable. Try and put your mind elsewhere. Try and just think of the end result. All right, think of how nice it's gonna to be to have that hair gone, okay? Um, things to remember, remember where you've parked, okay? Keep yourself close by if you can. It'll avoid that long walk. And even if you do have to have a long walk, if you've got no other option, just remember everyone is too wrapped up in their own rubbish to worry about what you're doing with your face, okay? And I wish you all the luck with it. If you have any questions around electrolysis, if you want any more advice or anything that I've not covered in here that I might have forgot to have covered, then please give me a shout, okay? I put my Twitter handle up in the corner for you and you can get in touch with me on there or leave me a comment. Please like, comment, subscribe on the video if you found this helpful um, or even if you've not found it helpful and you've thought, God, what a load of rubbish that was, then let me know, okay? It all helps, all right? Thank you, have a good one, bye.